there are secrets out there, guys, performance marketing secrets, and knowing just one or two of them can light up your funnels. Let's go. This is Performance Marketing Insiders. I'm Chris Mechanic. Join me as we go deep into the secrets of the world's elite marketing minds. Performance Marketing Insiders is sponsored by Web Mechanics, the AI-driven performance agency that makes you smarter. Hey, everybody. Welcome to another episode of Performance Marketing Insiders. I'm so excited for today's guest. Uh, he's just a lot of fun to talk to. Every time I talk with him, I learn something. Uh, and we have, we've got a lot of things in common, but he uh, he's a serial entrepreneur. He's a B2B marketing thought leader, uh, a frequent podcaster, and might I even say a podcast whisperer, a miraculous master of marketing. Uh, he's a U.S. Marine Corvette author of Marketing Automation Unleashed, host of the Hardcore Marketing Show, founder and podcast architect at Ringmaster Conversational Marketing, the Ringmaster himself, ladies and gentlemen, Casey Cheshire. Wow. That was an awesome intro. Thanks, dude. Somebody really skilled wrote that. <laughs> Somebody. I mean, those weren't just words straight out of your mouth. You had, you had preparation? <laughs> no, uh, it's so good to have you, man. How are you? Oh, I'm so good. I I'm 2023 best year yet. I'm determined. Nice. Yeah. So for everybody listening, Casey and I actually know each other in real life. Uh, we do business together. He, his company ringmaster is actually the producer of the podcast that you're listening to right now. So that's fun. So meta, right? <laughs> right. It's crazy. All right, man. Well, uh, we got lots to talk about today. You know, we like to start with a bang. The audience wants the marketing secrets. So lay it on us. What's one of your biggest, baddest, best kept uh, marketing secrets to success? It's all about listening. And if you do it right, you can actually turn a, a customer listening tool into a revenue generating machine. And you do it with a podcast. That's my customer secret. listening tool. Oh man, let's unpack this. So yeah, let's customer unpack. listening tool into a revenue generating machine and it's called a podcast. So break that down for us a little bit. Just expand on it for me. Yeah. You know, it's, it's tied to the idea, you know, in marketing, we're always, the tendency is to get a little creative, right? Let me try out this new ad copy. Let me just try to invent these words and phrases. And sometimes we give each other props for being really clever, right? Oh, you use that emoji really well, or you, you wrote that really compelling subject line, but it's compelling to who, right? It's compelling to each other, to fellow marketers, but is it actually compelling to the person who you want to take action? We don't know. Sometimes we think we're the buyer, but unless you're a marketer selling to a marketer, and it may not even be the buyer in that case, but unless you're even that close, you're probably not your buyer, right? It reminds me of Super Bowl commercials. I, notoriously, I'd see a terrible Super Bowl commercial, and admittedly, there are some, but oftentimes there'd be ones where I'd just be like, cringe, like, what was? What did I just see? They, they just wasted a million dollars, but yeah. maybe they did, or maybe I'm just not the target of that particular ad. So where am yeah. I going with this? The idea is, instead of trying to invent the, the words and phrases that will drive action, listen for them. And the best way to do that is to invite your customer, current customers, future customers, prospects onto a podcast and ask them about their, their successes, their challenges, what keeps them up at night. Find out what those challenges are that you can potentially address with your service, your solution, your software. And then the words they tell you, don't just let it go in one ear and come out the other. Record that thing. It's going to be a podcast. Mm. Cool. But then listen for that terminology. Did they call it a, a customer service mechanism? Did they call it a, a revenue mechanism for, for growth? Or were they just like, man, I got to hit my lead number. I got I to gotta hit my rev number for this year or this quarter even, right? Yeah. How are they saying it? And I found the most success that I've had in my campaigns comes from just repeating back to them what I heard. I heard you say this, and then it's amazing. You sound like, a, you mentioned the whisperer at the beginning. You sound like the customer whisperer because you're telling them exactly what they told you. And then you're telling other people just like them exactly what you heard. You're not inventing anything. So it's less about being creative and inventing. It's more about listening, hearing, mm. and then giving it back to people. That's brilliant. That's brilliant. And it reminds me, we one time uh, did an exercise where... Uh, we hired a consultant who went out and basically interviewed a bunch of our clients, took a long time, you know, uh, 
cost it a lot of money. But I've never thought about actually using a podcast for that for that specific mechanism. But that's brilliant though, because you can have so much uh, deep, such deeper conversations on a podcast, uh, as well as like a, a wider variety of topics. So you can hear about like not necessarily how they talk and think only about your specific service line or area of expertise, but you can also use language, uh, you know, related topics like. Like for instance, in software, everyone says CAC, you know, like what, like, you know, we got to reduce our CAC Uh, and that kind of language to blend in. But I've never thought about actually uh, using that for ad copy. You know, and it's, it's the challenge. You know, when you interview someone, it's that case study problem. What's the case study problem? When you ask someone to sit down with you to do a case study, it's, re- it's a real ask, right? It, it's not a two-way thing. You're not helping someone else out by having them interview for your case study. You're like, can I have an hour out of your really busy day where you're trying to meet your numbers so you don't get fired to like tell me how great I am so that I can record it and I can do well in my marketing, right? It's like a yeah. very one-sided ask. Now, there's really generous customers who are like, sure, I love you. I'm a big fan. I'll do that. But still, it's still kind of a selfish ask. And so a lot of us haven't done that. Like I, I'm kind of resistant to be like, let me just get on the phone with you and, and waste your time to help me out. You know, it's it's a tough ask. Instead of doing that, you flip the script. You're like, let me promote you on this show. The show is not about me. Yes, I'm going to get some great data and I'm going to get these revenue generating ideas. It's going to be fantastic. But in the meantime, let's also promote you and your company. Let's make you a thought leader in your industry. Let's give you the spotlight so that you can shine. And in the meantime, I'll benefit as well. Yeah. So uh, I imagine we have a variety of different types of people listening. You know, Some might be founders or um, execs at small companies. Some might be at large companies. Some might be director level. Can anybody start a podcast? Anybody can start a podcast. Anybody can. And the crazy thing is, sometimes I'll talk to people who are like, you know what? I'm not really a talker. Well, you know what? If you're a guest on a podcast, you got to talk. So this is the difference. Sometimes people think guesting and hosting are the same thing. They're not. They're like completely different. If you're a guest, you're going to get asked questions. You got to answer them. But as a host, your job is actually not to talk a lot. It's to ask really good questions and then shut up, right? And so it does. you don't need to be like the most you know, extroverted person on the planet. And it helps because it won't tire you out as much to get on these things. But really, it's just sit down with someone who... You want to get to know better. And you know what? You build these relationships with these customers. I once had um, this, this CMO of a, a perfect, ideal buyer profile. I interviewed her on the podcast and she said, you know what? Every now and then I go to New Hampshire, which is where I am. And I go hiking with my, my friends. Next time I'm up there, do you want to come hiking with us? And I was like, hell yeah, I do. Right. So you start to make these relationships with your customers that's beyond their nine to five, right? It's it's beyond that. It's their five to nine. Um, and, and so uh it, it's it's these kind of things that that really can can help you build that robust profile. And you mentioned the language they use, right? Talk them in the language they use by doing these things and also build these relationships with them. Yeah. So I know that you are an amazing podcaster. I was on your podcast actually. And you were a great host. It was a lot of fun. Um, tell us your, like, and so I imagine you are eating your own dog food. Like you're doing this right now. Tell us about how it's been working for you. Like what's it been driving business wise or uh, relationship wise otherwise? You know, it, a it's a, it's a funny thing. There's so many different benefits to it, right? So there's, we're much more in connection with what are the pain points? What are the the trigger points? What What are the, things that happen in that buyer process, right? To that persona. What are the things that happen that trigger a search for you? Do we? Do you know those things? And that isn't the Google search. So what happened before that? It's things you can't really get from tech. You have to have a conversation. And what's interesting, it's not the first question, it's the follow-on. Like, well, what triggered that? Or like, what, what, what created that situation? So we've got all that enormous feedback and data. Um, and have there, there have also been sales that happened from this. One of my um, most favorite experiences with this was I was chatting with someone, um, their CMO of a, of a tech company, and they were using a particular platform and they're migrating to another one. 
And wouldn't you know, that was the one that my last company specialized in. It was like, well, holy heck, like that's what we do. And it's like, oh, great. That's what I'm looking for. We got our teams together. We scoped out an $80,000 deal, right? So this isn't like not everyone is ready to do that, but that was on accident, right? I wasn't on purpose. So a little bit more intention about picking the right people and you can start landing some of the right things. And the other thing is just content, right? Content for days. I was able to write a book, which is just so much of an authority signal and pillar really um, to help sell those larger B2B deals. I was able to write a book by doing a podcast consistently and turning themes, months into themes and and really using the the learnings from these guests into into what became like a 12 chapter book after about a year. So you can really accelerate your content, you can you know accelerate your biz dev and just speak the right words by doing a podcast. That's awesome, man. Was that the podcast that you're doing now or that was a previous podcast? Yeah. Yeah. It's crazy. Got it. So totally your crazy. book, The Um Marketing Automation Unleashed was basically a compilation of your pods. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. What's crazy awesome. is I cite the episodes in the book. So when you flip through the book, you'll see, um, oh, here's a topic on landing page A-B testing, right? Um, yeah. And there's a certain order you should follow, right? I know this is this is a great topic for, for this cast too. There, you shouldn't just randomly test things. I think a lot of people randomly test this and that and this, that. There's an order to the chaos. And I learned that order from a brilliant guy. And I interviewed him on the podcast and I cited him in the podcast and some of his content turned into the book. Right. And so and then you're sharing the love again. It's like sharing the love, not trying to hoard it. And so yeah. I'm promoting this guy in that chapter and I'm promoting this um, exec in that chapter. And so now you have 300 people that are promoting your book because you promoted them in it. It's amazing. Yeah. That's awesome. When did you publish that book? 2020, I think. 2020. Yeah. Nice. When did you start Ringmaster? Uh, that was probably two and a half years ago. It was probably like in stealth mode uh, because we're still running Cheshire Impact and people are you know, still doing the podcast, but people started saying like, hey, that's that's a cool podcast. Like, how do you do that? And, and of course, I wouldn't shut up about it. And that was my always my signal. If I'm not, if I don't shut up about something, it's probably a good thing to launch a business into, you know? Yeah. That's awesome. Well, um, Tell us a little bit about just the chronology of your career, because even though I've known you for a while, I, I don't really know. But I, I think you used to have a Salesforce consulting pre- or a Pardot consulting shop. Yep. Yeah, totally. Um, was that your first business, or did you have businesses before that? I've been launching things since I've been a, a little a little young guy. Um, really? Everything from you know behind our house was this giant field. You know, before all the developers come in and build more houses, there was this giant field. We called yeah. it the Hidden Valley because no one ever went back there and they had raspberries the size of your fist. Mm-hmm. Not really, but as a kid, they felt like there were these giant things you wouldn't get at a store. So I just remember even picking those, put them in a Ziploc bag and selling them in the neighborhood, right? Like, nice. these are yummy. I think other people should try them too. And, you know, it's those things or, or doing magic shows for the neighborhood kids. There's always some kind of aspect of wanting to, you know, entertain or or help or or create joy with people, and eventually the technical side started. You know, when I started doing computers early on, and America Online, and the internet came about. You know, I was still before that. I was able to code some things in Basic. Yeah. Uh, so there's always that aspect of wanting to connect with people and and you know enjoy life and and create aha moments, but also using tech to to do that and scale that and share it with more people. Awesome. Yeah. So you were an original hustler, just like from elementary school on to start and stuff. Right. It's um, a crazy pattern, right? When you start seeing those things happening and and happening and, you know, and, and none of those companies were like failed companies. They were like learning lessons too. I even yeah. I tried having a, a playwriting company one time because I wrote a play. I thought maybe I'll just publish it myself. Yeah. Uh, and then you learn a lot about what play publishing industry really is. You know, it's a yeah. lot of reading very terrible plays to yeah. find one in a hundred that's worth publishing. So yeah, very interesting. So what was your first like significant business? Like, yeah, I think Cheshire Impact, the, the marketing automation okay. you know, agency was definitely the the first you know big one for me where it's like 30 people and just all over the place and people in US and Canada and working with Salesforce and Pardot. Super cool adventure. Yeah, no, that's awesome. That's cool. I didn't realize you were like a technical person by name. I mean, I guess I should have, but yeah. um, 
Yeah. Well, the background was computer science, right? And I kind of got tricked into that. You know, some people, I think like majors, when you're, when you're young, you're going to school, like, what does it actually mean? Right. So I, I was on the internet. I was doing like AOL at the time. I volunteered at some, I was doing like the soccer forum on America online yeah. and, and helping out with that and, and actually learning to code AOL. It had its own programming language and it was kind of cool. You know, so I'm like, oh, this is fun, you know, internet, you know, um, yeah. and then I'm like, I'll do computer science, but school is sort of backdated, right? They're, and so yeah, they're like, well, we don't like know exactly C++. what computers plus. are. <laughs> right. Yeah. So they're like, we're not sure what to throw at you. So here's like, I don't know, more math classes than you'll ever need in your entire life. <laughs> and then here's some coding languages that you'll probably not use. Uh, <laughs> right. So yeah. C, C++, eventually Java. Okay. But, you know, and I just sort of learned HTML and those kind of things on my own. Um, for fun, just to, yeah. just to make things happen. But yeah, yeah, always that technical side to try to figure things out and see if I can't, you know, take some simple action and repeat it and do it over and over again. Yeah. So you started up Cheshire Impact, built it up to 30 people, sold it. Uh, and then some time passed and you started uh, Ringmaster. As soon as that thing was done, it's like, let's go full time in Ringmaster. Yeah. Nice. So you knew yeah. what you wanted to do like before. Totally knew. Totally knew. Yeah. That's awesome. And I've sort of gotten attuned to that. You know, that's why I'm always trying to advise people like listen and listen for those moments of passion where you are the guy or gal who won't shut up about a certain topic. Yeah. If you're going to start a company, start it around that. That's yeah. the thing. And you had this bad at like the hardcore uh, marketing podcast was already a thing. Yeah. And you were just loving it. You were meeting people like it was working and you were like, man, I got a good recipe here. Yeah. Right. Which I think you do have a great recipe. Yeah. It's all about, like, I've always wanted to make sure I'm doing it myself first so that I'm advising from like first world knowledge, like firsthand, I've done this, I've done that so that I'm not just like BSing people. Like that's the part about marketing that I always want to try to avoid is that like just making up stuff and seeing if people click. I really want to help people. And I want to tell people the right thing from my own experience if I can, or the experience I get secondhand from interviewing some really smart like yourself on, on the hardcore marketing show and then learning from you and then sharing that with other people. So I feel yeah. like podcasting is inherently like a selfless giving type mechanism. So it's amazing to start a relationship off that way with you know a new customer or even you know an existing customer. It's like how often have we ever sat down for an hour or half an hour, however long without any distractions, right? I can't check my phone. Yeah. Yeah. Chris, sure. What's up? Uh, yeah. Like, wait, wait, what'd you ask? No one does that because they're afraid that they're going to get called out. So everyone's focused on each other in this, this like distance we have. It's like, it's that typical several feet in length. I don't know if you've, you've heard about this, but there's studies that show, you know, how far away you are when you're talking to someone affects how you how you're gonna feel about them and then also you know are they in a safe distance away from you are they too close we've always met those people but if you're if you're speaking from each other too far away then it's not as intimate you're not creating as much relationship so I think just this one on one kind of conversation is just I don't know it's like it's like Christmas for me. Nice. Well that's awesome and I'm happy that you found uh your calling it sounds like what are you um what's the business look like today or like what i guess what are some of your biggest challenges sure that you're going through yeah the you know speaking you know to fellow marketers the biggest challenge can be adoption right so it, it's not like it with the last company well the last company is that too marketing automation we want to get you to adopt something new but most of the time the people we spoke to they weren't just figuring out digital marketing right so they weren't just Oh, they, they're getting off of radio ads and billboards onto the web. And then they're doing this. No, they've kind of been on the web. They've been doing digital, digital things. And so now it's time to do marketing automation. So it was like inevitable. And some people had already sort of planted the seeds. Um, you know, Salesforce is, is selling the hell out of the tool. So you're kind of like positioned in a good partnership where people get it. Like, okay, this is the next thing, right? So it was a lot easier to then get people to take action. Whereas with podcasting, you know, we've got a lot of podcasts out there. We're listening to them, but it's early, still early in the adoption curve. Um, I don't know if you've, you've heard this stat, but any guesses on how many uh, podcasts there are out there? 
Uh, I will guess like 50,000. I was going to say, I'll let you round to the nearest million. Do you want to round to the nearest million? Oh my goodness. To the nearest million? Are you kidding yeah. me? Uh, three million, three and a half million. Close. Yeah, you're super close. Maybe by the time this airs, it'll be that. It's like about two, two-ish million um, podcasts. Wow. And that seems like a lot until you think about any guesses on how many blogs there are. Oh my the goodness, dude. There's got to be like a hundred million blogs. Yeah, 200 plus million blogs, right? So oh, back goodness. in the day, we had to like, pound tables and you and I were in that in that zone where we have to like get people to do just table stakes, right? Nowadays, yeah. if you don't have content, if you don't have articles, I mean, call it a blog, call it whatever. But if you don't have that stuff, then what are you even doing, right? So you need that. It's like table stakes and that's at 200 million. So then you go back and you look at podcasts and some of them are just for fun. So as a business, you adopt something like this. And this is why it's really a secret, right? If, on this show, you talk about secrets. This is the best kept secret, you know, not not for its own sake. I mean, I'm trying to spread the secret everywhere, but that would be my biggest challenge is that it's it's a new thing. It's a different way of thinking about things. And instead of spending 200K on that event, you know, and doing a whole bunch of branding and hoping and praying the CFO and your ideal customer will notice, you're, you're changing the script a little bit and you're going to invite them on your podcast next week and then see what happens from there. So it's yeah. different. It's new needs to be explained, needs to be shared on podcasts like this. So that's my challenge right now is just getting the, the word out and, and not getting the word out to like a fellow podcasting echo chamber of all the other podcast nerds. It's like, no, let's get to the people who are just marketing right now and, sh- and share that there's this, there's this thing. Like if you knew about SEO before it was SEO, you'd have an advantage. And that's what we have here. Yeah. And I think that, so here's what happened for me anyway. Yeah, because please. so somebody had suggested that I start a podcast and I was like, I actually thought the opposite. I was like, it's too late. Like there's like everybody and their mom has a podcast now. Like I don't really feel like doing a podcast. Um, but then I think it was, I think it was you. I think maybe I spoke with you. Uh, Cause I thought it was a game of like, Hey, how many people can we get to listen to this podcast? But it's actually a game of like, let's meet some amazing people and let's have some amazing conversations and create some relationships. And oh, let's record it, by the way, and allow others that are interested in these topics to listen to. Yeah. So in framing it like that, I was like, oh, so you mean it's like, like, so I use this podcast as a mechanism for fun and relationships, but also for learning and just staying up to date with stuff. Um. And fun story, like my my last uh, guest was this guy, Jason Goldsmith, who uh, recently sold his, uh, his company, Car Checks. He was super duper hot on chat GPT, right? Like he was just like, you know, just all in basically on chat GPT. And this was before I, it had really, I mean, it, I knew about it. I'd used it a couple of times, but I didn't really realize it was the massive breakthrough and like the potential impact that it could have until then and i you know since then spent a weekend or so just like messing around with it and learning about chat gpt and it's like you know now i'm obsessed with it yeah um i hear it just passed a warden mba entrance exam oh really yeah it passed it (laughs) I I could imagine it would probably ace it because like, like factual knowledge based stuff like that is just like amazing. Yeah. And simplicity Um, of language too. Like here's your answer as opposed to let me get all wordy and and overly wordy and confuse myself. Here's just a simple algorithmic answer. Yeah. No, seriously. But yeah, so I I hear you. And that's interesting that you consider it still to be like early on in the adoption cycle. And it makes a lot of sense. I mean, 2 million pods versus 200 or three, it's like a hundred X the number of, uh, the number of blogs. Yeah. But I think that's what prevents a lot of people from starting it. Like they might think like, Hey, you know, like, well, they might think, Hey, I don't really have that much interesting content to say that hasn't really been said already. So that was uh, one one thing. But the so I was aware of podcasts, but not really aware of like the right podcast strategy. Yeah. 
Yeah, I, you know I love that I mean? you, you highlighted it's not about the growing your listener numbers like your vanity metrics, right? It's not about your impressions. It's about the close to one. It's it's about all those other things you get. And by the way, what's cool is when you put those things first, your impressions do come, right? You, yeah. They do grow. You do get audience. You do get reach. I'm going to share this episode with everyone, right? So yeah. it, you have built-in promotion into the model as opposed to how am I going to get this thing out? If it, this if this was just all about you, you got to find some people that are like, yeah, I'll promote you every week. <laughs> right. But it's right. not. It's like, hey, it's about you. Okay, cool. Casey's going to blast this through all of his social channels and his company's going to share it and he's going to tag it. I may even do, and, I, and I've had this happen to me where one of the most popular episodes on my, my marketing podcast is not, you know, the famous book author who probably forgot about me the moment he's hit done recording. It was this head of sales because I'll often talk to sales and marketing, right? And, and so head of sales in this company in Texas, and he, we talked about, you know, really wanting your customers to succeed and how that translated into marketing and sales. Really good comp conversation but he he sounded really good in the show like he was you could you could trust this guy in what he does he actually shares the episode of my marketing podcast with every single prospect he has and so before they can sign up and do business with him they have to listen to his show and if they like what they hear he's like if you like what you hear let's do business together you know this is how i am this is who yeah. i am if you like it let's do business so that episode alone i can't even tell you how many like thousands of listens it has just you know, more so than anyone else, because this guy's like, this is my episode. Maybe that's what this episode is for me. And so that's where you start getting this amazing network effect of you're, you're not only learning your own marketing strategies and secrets that can help you sell, but you might be creating marketing collateral for your guests, who's then going to be using this as their billboard because they felt like they got really well represented to everyone they meet. And now your brand and your message and you yourself as the host are in front of all these people you never would have thought you'd meet because you were the one that created the conversation. Yeah, absolutely. You know, that was, um, I just got an idea. Like you might, so you know how you do that thing where you will send like a little plaque with the quote, Yeah, which I think is a lovely little touch. Yeah. Um, the ringmaster service like basically after each episode we'll send this little plaque which is um i have mine just hanging right here on the wall i can't wait but, to get um, mine from this show i know right <laughs> uh but the that'd be kind of cool to have like a little highlight reel like a one minute or something like a little highlight reel of a guest yeah here's you absolutely crushing it here are your best quotes your best moments that would be mixed be in with a little ACDC at the same time, you know. You could probably get Chat GPT to do that for you. Yeah, maybe, maybe. Like, yeah, like give it the raw feed and then see what happens. Yeah, it'd be like yeah. make a ninety-second video containing the most compelling clips from this hour-long audio. See, and that's going to be the interesting thing to think about with Chat GPT of like, does it know what the most compelling moments are of this podcast? Um, can it? deduce that other than maybe looking at YouTube, where do people click back and forth? You know, how does it know, you know, what those moments are, but yeah, it definitely opens Pandora's box. Like who knows what it could create. Yeah. Crazy times, man. Cool. So, um, so challenge wise, it's that, uh, awareness piece. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's that much earlier in the process, right? Earlier in the sales process, do they know there's a problem? You know, do they know that maybe there is a pain? The pain is I'm, I'm not hitting these numbers and I'm spending gobs amount of money. And, and, you know, I've done that, right? So the last 10 years, I was Mr. Automation. And the 10 years before that, I'm like just the marketing, you know, guy and just trying to get those leads, those MQLs, SQLs. Like, yeah, I know it's a, it's a B2B world and we're just trying to grow these companies and it's challenging, but there is, there are, are better ways, right? There are these sort of counterintuitive ways that put your best thought leader. Here's the other thing, like content creation. Who creates it, right? And I think we've all learned the lesson, like maybe just chat GPT is the thing, but for sure, it's probably not like the brand new person at your company, right? Um, it, but Or is it the CEO, but they're busy? So this is a, a great way. Of, you get the smartest people. You, know, you have a CEO who has limited time or your thought leader, your, your evangelist, 
they're on, you got a smart guest who's also an expert in some topic and they're talking. Like that's a great source file to give to chat GPT or to then give to your content team because the people are in the room and you write what you heard as opposed to trying to go out and research something. So this cuts down on, on content time dramatically as well. And so there's like all these different boxes are checked. It sounds kind of crazy um, how many boxes can be checked. Ooh, yeah, that's an even better idea. It's basically like take this audio file and make three blog posts out of it. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And that's brilliant because then you don't have to worry about plagiarism. You don't have to worry about any like cryptographic watermark. That's your original content. Google search. Yeah. It's your original content. Yeah. Yeah. Then you got, then you have have really good content for days as opposed to this like, you know, fluffy stuff or machine made, you know, in a factory made, you know, content where people are guessing at the answers. And then you as the thought leader, probably just cringe looking at that content. I don't know if you've ever had this process in the past where if you see some content, but that's not what you would say or like you know from your own experience, which is vast from all, you know, you run the show here. You might, ah, you know, I wish it would say this or this or this. And that's what kind of grinds the content to a halt is because when the thought leaders actually see what's going out there, like I don't want my name signed to that. That's not, doesn't really represent our company well. So yeah, if we could if you could churn out something that started at the original conversation between two people really in the know, that's creating some really good stuff. Yeah. So have you found any uh, solutions to the awareness issue or like what have you been doing that's been working? It's a good question, right? So um, a lot of what I'm doing is is the thing itself, right? So podcasting, podcast hosting um, is, is definitely a factor. Uh, speaking at events, uh, social is a big one. You know, uh, like I recommend everyone come out, follow me. I'm on LinkedIn, Casey Cheshire. Um, I'm sure we'll link to it in the show notes. But like the reason I want you to, to follow me and just check out what happens on social, right? I, I'm very, and you are too, Chris, very active on social with podcast content. And so the more people see like, oh, this show clip and that show clip, and they're always clips of the guests as opposed to about me. I mean, I'm like a true ringmaster. I'm trying to like put attention on the performer, not on myself. Uh, but of course you came to my circus, right? So it's like putting attention elsewhere. And and the more you start seeing podcasts in your LinkedIn feed, you're like, maybe this is a thing. And the people fortunate enough to, to follow either you or I are going to be at the beginning of that bell curve from 2 million to 200 million, right? Yeah. Um, yeah. Absolutely. You know, some of the most advanced uh, B2B SaaS clients, like they have these really sophisticated uh, revenue engines, you know? Um, I'm talking about like Gong, for instance, the company Gong. They're just sure. like, really amazing marketers like they put out amazing content and they've got this massive organic linkedin following shout out to udi (laughs) yeah shout out to udi who was on the pod actually um gong and udi are both just amazing but they actually have and encourage i believe every single salesperson to have a blog or to have a podcast rather podcast really yeah i'm pretty sure it might not be Gong that does that. I know Gong has like a, at least a handful of sales people that have in their own individual podcasts. But there's one of these B2B SaaS like advanced companies says every single SDR, BDR, AE, like all of them have to have their own podcast. Yeah, that's where we're going, right? That's the future. Is it's the it's the true calling card. We started with the brochure, the websites, your brochure, right? No more the yellow pages. Now it's this sort of weird website on the internet thing. And we've yeah. developed there. Now it's your your articles, your content. But now we know, huh, that stuff can be created by chat GPT. Who even writes this stuff anymore? And sometimes you get just crap articles that don't really stand for anything just to try to trick you to fill out that lead form. So where we're going are these true interactions, getting to know the real people, right? The people that have listened to you and your episodes week after week after week know you really well. Right. And and there's a, a trust and a relationship. And they know they know what, what's weird about you, but they know what they like about you. And and like and they're listening for a reason. And so that's where we're going, is where 
you start building real trust with people because you've heard them day in and day out. You've learned from them, just like we used to learn from HubSpot on how to do inbound, right? Now we're learning from everyone else. Everyone becomes that inbound university now. Everyone becomes a teacher to the, the groups that need to hear them through their own podcast. And it's the most authentic way you can do it. You can't really fake yourself you know, day after day, episode after episode. It's the real you recorded. Doesn't have to be fancy. Doesn't have to have the, you know, the the movie studio. It's just two people talking in their offices or, or somewhere fun, and and that's where we're going. Is that everyone's going to have a podcast, and it won't be this sort of cheat. Oh, everyone has a podcast. No, no, that's the thing. That's how people will get to know if they want to do business with you. They'll go listen to a couple episodes. Maybe they'll listen to a highlight reel like you're talking about, and yeah. that's how they're going to get to know someone. Just like this, buyer decisions in B two B marketing are made earlier and earlier in the process. They're going to be made by listening to your podcast and not just in a B2C world, but in the B2B world, they're going to have listened to you. Not, you know, not even they've consumed your marketing before they're talking to sales. They've listened to your CEO, your evangelist episode after episode, you know, hundreds of hours. Let's say a hundred, let's say, let's say eight hours of listening to your CEO, your evangelist talk and, and interview people. They get a sense for who they are and who they, what they like about them. And then they're going to talk to sales and sales is going to be like, wow, we're amazing because we just converted this guy. That's because they've been listening to you and they've been watching and learning from you uh, for a while at that point. Yeah. Hey, do you have any clients that have multiple like internal people that are each doing their own pod? Not that much. Um, we're starting to see several different companies launch podcasts related to individual products, right? So product might have a different end user. So you're interviewing someone different. And so with that, you don't want to throw them all in the same podcast and everyone's confused and it never really speaks to anyone. The, the, the trend now is actually to go micro niche or niche, depending on how you like to say it. it and so instead of trying to be the, the, the Joe Rogan podcast, you want to be the B2B marketers who like lattes, uh, long walks mm -hmm. in the beach and technology podcast, right? Where it's like very, very refined and and so people choose to learn from you and that niche. Uh, and so that's where we're going. So a lot of companies are seeing that, especially tech companies are seeing, okay, well, let's start with one podcast, but then like that works really well. How can we get even more focused with this second podcast specific to this new product, right? Especially a new product launch, it totally breaks the mold, right? How do you launch a new product now? Time and effort and money. How do you do it with a podcast? Boom, you start interviewing all the people that would eventually buy from you right now. And maybe they don't, maybe it's not the right time for them, but now they immediately know about your product. Like that whole awareness thing, you've jumped through it. You, yeah. They're not going to play around, have to give them a bunch of free blankets at Dreamforce. They know who you are. In fact, they, they know who you are and they like, and they trust you because they just spent an hour talking to you. Yeah. Yeah. And you know, um, another pod related aspect that's hot and growing fast in B2B circles is community, like community led growth with customer advisory boards and like physical events and um but pod fits right into that hell yeah you know like it can totally be part of uh a community strategy you know you know i really it's kind of like the foundation to the community like what does a true community need they need to really they need to be either entertained or educated or both together. And so you need some kind of undercurrent or some sort of mission that unites them all. And oftentimes a podcast, especially if it's a very targeted one, is exactly that. And it's a community of people who like you know the approach that you're taking on this particular pod and they want to get more of that. Or and also meet other people, right? If have you ever done this, Chris, where like you're chatting with someone and you share favorite podcasts and you both find out, oh, you both like like Lex Friedman or someone and you're like, yeah, that guy is so Nerdy, I, I love listening to his episodes. He's so smart. Yeah. And and then you just really hit it off with someone. And that's what people are craving right now. Let's get out of this COVID thing. Hey, maybe they'll tag us with a COVID thing on Spotify because it just said that. Let's get out of <laughs> let's get out of the COVID thing and let's let's connect with each other. So yeah, you're totally right on that trend. Is it community is really where you go with this? It that's like the next step. It, that's like what happens after the interview is you get those guests, you put them in this community, and you allow everyone to have access to each other and allow your guests to talk. Some of the best value I've seen is allowing the, your fellow guests who are fellow wizards in these particular topics to engage with each other and do it on a channel that you provide so that you continue to be 
the ringmaster of that situation and connecting great people to each other. Good stuff. I love it, man. I love it. Well, congratulations to you on your success. I'm impressed with uh, what you've done in just a very short amount of time with ringmaster. And, uh, it sounds like you are pretty much at the crest of, of the podcast wave. So right place, right time, good, passionate energy and, uh, Thanks, man. and a great service. You know, like we love you guys. You make it really easy for us. Everything from the sourcing of the, uh, guests to, you know, scheduling and note stocks and stuff. You guys do a really great job. Man, I appreciate that. Right. And that, that makes this episode my new marketing collateral. So yeah. if you're listening to this now, now you know why. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Show it to every, uh, show it to every prospect, like, like your guest. Hell yeah. <laughs> like just and watch this. What's crazy is when you invite people on, they're just happy to share those kind of things. And, uh, and so it's the, be- that's the best kind of referral, right? It's the best kind of recommendation is just these conversations with people who like doing business with each other. Cool. All right, man. Well, uh, we're running short on time here. Let me let's go to the to the lightning round to the grab bag Ooh, questions. Let's go. You ready? Nervous. All right. I'm gonna start with my favorite one. If you were to start a side hustle, which could not be related to podcasts, what would it be? Uh my next company. And it's going to be uh a space industry company. It's going to be around the business of getting to Mars. And and there's going to be a lot of big spends and companies going in that direction. And they're going to need sprockets. They're going to need little tiny things that are that they're not thinking about. And I'm going to make lots of those and I'm going to supply them all uh, as they go. So that's the next thing is, is thinking about space. Really? In the next are you planet. serious? Yeah, totally, man. Wow. Okay. My man knows what company he's going to. Next. You have to start that. I'm going to start it with a podcast. I bet you are. <laughs> <laughs> um, next up, top three books or influential reads that have had an impact on your life. Uh, n- number one is Traction, Gina Wickman. Fantastic book. All about process. Even if you're not a process person, um, in marketing, man, we need process more than anything. And sometimes we spend a lot of time adulting when we just need to like borrow a really well-proven process, drop it in our department or our company and move on, right? So Traction is a big favorite of mine. Um, 21 Irrefutable Laws of Leadership, fantastic book. Uh, little little snippets, little nuggets. You know, you can jump around, you can read it in order, little tiny lessons, takeaways. And I, I first read it probably 30 years ago. So it's just one of those ones that sticks with you. Yeah. Um, and, you know, I just read The Alchemist recently and I found that to be really kind of a, a cool, a cool book that, you know, fiction, just, I think we need a, a healthy mix of like business books and then at least a little bit of fiction in there um, to kind of get us thinking, keep our creative energies flowing. Cool. I'll check that out. The alchemist. I'm, I'm like trying to get into fiction, but it's a little hard for me, but a you lot get, of people you talk find about right, the benefits. You need the right, you know, genre. You just need the, the right thing. Like for me, it's like space sci-fi is usually the thing but yeah you yeah. kind of experiment you know try different things uh um yeah, like sure. water for elephants is a great one to try yeah especially if All you right. haven't seen a movie yet cool well we'll definitely include those in the show notes and last oh, actually up, one more can i throw one more in there sure it's called marketing automation unleashed <laughs> <laughs> written by a guy named casey cheshire yeah. on amazon today nice i'll check that out i will um last up what do you do to maintain your energy or to avoid burnout. Yeah, maintain energy. A um, couple things. Uh, you need to be intentional about it. It's very important. Uh, think about energy like you think about your money. You have to think about where you invest it, where you get it, where you're spending it. And energy is so important. So uh, 100% working out. Something about kicking your own butt uh, as often as frequent as possible, especially at the beginning of the day, even if you're tired and exhausted. Uh, definitely doing that. Uh, then hydration, finding a great way of doing that. Um, there's this really cool stuff called um, Element, L-M-N-T. It's essentially like salt with like a non-nasty flavoring, you know, orange, citrus, those kind of things. But it's like all the magnesium and the potassium and the salts you need. Um, so you don't need to worry about like, oh, I'm drinking too much water, but I'm not drinking enough you know, electrolytes, right? That's what that is. So 
mixing that in with a gallon of water is a fantastic recipe for staying hydrated. It's amazing mm. how just eating the right food and drinking enough water is just, it's like all the basics that you could pay a million dollars to hear, but it's like so true. And then finally, I, I've decided this year is the year where I'm not going to eat things that my body's not happy with, right? And I think we all have those things where we're like, yeah, you do that and you kind of feel like Ooh, afterward and it's kind of a mistake, yeah. but it was so good. I've decided yeah. that this year is not the year for that. You know, this year, nice. it's like there's plenty of other things. So it's just really thinking about intakes and outtakes and, and expenditures. And one of the things I love doing is mixing in a, a free day. And a free day is a day spent doing this is from Dan Sullivan. It's a day, 24 hours, um, and you and you can't do any work, right? So you maybe Saturday, maybe Sunday, probably not both if you're like one of us. Um, but it means that they say Saturday, you can't open your email, you can't even read a business book, forbidden. And if and if you can get through a 24 hour period like that, that counts as a free day. You try to get as many of those in as possible. I know it's not easy. Uh, maybe Sunday you want to check your email, but try to get a couple of days where you just purely recharge your battery because then you'll come back ferocious, right? Yes. I know you wanted to check it on Saturday and you wanted to hustle it and you wanted to crush it. Well, guess what? You're going to come back twice as, as excited and eager and ready to just dominate that following day because you restricted yourself from spending that energy that day. And you, in fact, you recharged even more. So that's the kind of things that I love doing. Nice. I like that. I'm going to charge the, I'm going to try that just like a total free day. Yeah. It's not easy. It's totally yeah. not easy. You can't check the email. Like, like sometimes if you don't think about it, you'll, your thumb will just pull up your email or your Slack. Phone. Yeah. Like, or oh, LinkedIn. No, yeah, or... Close it quick. You can't do that. Otherwise that day doesn't count. Yeah. And then try again next time. I love that Casey. That's awesome. I'm going to try that. Yeah. Yeah, totally. And you give yourself buffer days. That's the other day, right? Meeting days. Okay. Buffer days. Then there's focus days where you really spend time trying to grow your company. No meetings on those days, but then free day. You always start with free day. If you can get your fr one free day in or set a goal like this, this month or this quarter, I want to get eight of them or four even and just yeah. try. Yeah, totally. Cool, man. Well, thank you so much. This has been super valuable for everybody listening. Uh, if you like this, please drop us a like or a comment or share with a friend. Um, Casey, let everybody know if they want to learn more about you or Ringmaster, where they should go. Yeah. Hit me up. I'm happy to answer questions, whether it's on you know how you tie your marketing automation in, how you track your ROI of podcasts. Happy to answer questions. Casey at ringmaster.com. You can go check out some of the shows that we host, like this one, some great podcasts. So you can get a sense for this is this is what it is. I mean, Chris, you do this so well. So thank you for being just a great example of like this is what it means to podcast and connect with your guests. Uh, so yeah, people can email me. Um, hit me up on LinkedIn, Casey Cheshire. And the you know, final thing is you know, that hardcore marketing book uh, called Marketing Automation Unleashed on Amazon. Check it out. It's everything I know about marketing automation. Um, so you, you kind of check that box, you have that undercurrent, but then you really get after it with the podcasting. That's the new generation. Nice. I love it, Casey. And I will check out your book. Thanks, man. I'll have to send you one. Yeah, please do. Cool. Well, we'll see you soon, man. Thank you very much. And that's a wrap. Thanks for joining us today. For show notes and other episodes, visit us at performancemarketinginsiders.com. This podcast is sponsored by Web Mechanics, the performance agency that makes you smarter, offering AI-driven search, paid social, analytics, and conversion rate optimization for financial services, health, B2B, and SaaS brands that know. Hey guys, exclusive for listeners of this podcast, you can get a performance marketing assessment for free. And this isn't some cookie cutter automated report. It lays out detailed, specific things you can do right now to unlock limitless growth and nirvana level personal satisfaction. To claim your free assessment, just go to performancemarketinginsiders.com slash audit and you'll have your customer report within just a few days. 